Hi and welcome to another Tabless Glass Emporium. Today we're going to look at this. So this is a pressed glass background with some fantastic foxglove detail in the foreground and today I'm going to show you how to make this. So to start with for this project I've cut a piece of glass. Now this is just, um, I'm just cut a piece that's quite a bit smaller than my kiln shelf because if it spreads a bit I want to make sure it doesn't go over the edge of the kiln shelf. I then cut strips of um, three millimeter white um, 30, um, uh, 113 and on those strips I've taken 0.5 millimeter black stringers and as you see I use the um, these because they're really hard to cut but you can if you use the grossing pliers you can just cut pieces off like that and then I've stuck them down so now I'm going to just use a bit of glue to stick these out. Now I haven't worried about these being the length of the the um of the glass. In fact, this was just a piece of glass I had in the shelves and I thought, oh, that will do. That's about the right length. Because the kind of silver birches, you know, I want, this is my ground at the front. And these are the treetops at the top. And, you know, I want some ground in, in front and I want some treetops. Um, it doesn't matter if they don't quite re re meet the treetops either. So I'm going to just sort of Put them down, a bit higgledy piggledy, for want of a better word. So these are going to squash out and spread a bit. I think they might be a bit wide, but I'm hoping it'll be all right. So after that, I want to add some um, green glass in between. Now that's quite dark, but I'm going to use quite a bit of glue here to hold everything in place. I'm just going to, as my daughter would, slap a load of glue on. Then it's all hopefully going to hold it in place. Yeah, I know that's a lot of glue. But... And then I'm even going to sort of layer up the glue a bit more. Because I want to sort of add that on top. And I don't mind if this goes a little bit on top and some of it underneath. It's going to be okay. And I'm just literally going to layer. These are our um, confetti. I'm probably using all we have of, of this particular type. This is obviously some green leaf confetti, but you could use just strips of glass if you wanted to in, in, in here. Um, obviously, we don't have confetti. I'm just trying to get some variation in the, in the piece and some up and downs. Um, I'm putting some of that in and then I'm gonna put some other colours as well and then I've got some smaller pieces of confetti I'm just going to spread out at the front I should really be building this straight on a kiln shelf and I wouldn't have to pick it up and move it so I'm going to fill in and after I've done a bit of this then I'm going to take some coarse frit and also sort of fill in the gaps with coarse frit. I'm going to use um, some mint and aventurine, you know my favourite one I use. I'm going to use some jade green in areas. I'm probably going to kind of, sort of block it out so I might put a load of jade green in this place and then I want to use some transparents as well. I'm going to use some aquamarine up the top a bit and I don't mind if some of the um, Fritz goes onto the trees. I'm not, you know, so bothered about that. It's all going to squash down together. So I'm going to put all of this on and I'll show you before it goes in the kiln to be pressed. So here it is, all kind of um, with the, all the green gone in. As you can see, it's very kind of, for want of a better word, messily done. We haven't been to neat. I don't mind the green going over the, the um, trees. Um, I really want that kind of rough feel. Now I'm just going to add, as well as the green, um, some of this coarse for it. Now I just have this dusky lilac around, but I kind of love this colour using it with a bit of green to add a bit of... I sort of feel it's a really good complementary colour um, in with the green at the top. Sort of give that feel. Um, and I also want to maybe at the top, I'm just going to add a bit more spring green on the top of the the trees up here 
to kind of give the feeling of leaves and sort of blend maybe the tops of the trees a bit more into the background. And then the final thing, I'm going to just put some very fine, it's this fuchsia I use on a lot of my projects and kind of liberally spread it around, um, particularly on the white of the tree trunks to add a real kind of pop of colour. Um, I find it works really well with this colour combinations um, to use just a bit of this here and there. Um, and it just comes out really nicely in products. It's, it's an expensive glass, I am aware, but I'm not using much um, and it will really add a particular touch to the project. Now I'm just seeing at the bottom here, there's a bit of the tree, bottom of the tree poking out, which I'm not so keen on. So I'm just going to add like another touches of things there. I, I kind of want the bottoms, like the tops of the trees, the bottoms of the trees to sort of fade into the undergrowth. Um, I'm looking for a glass, but here as well, and do the same. So this will now go in the kiln. It's going to go on our press fuse program, um, and kneeled afterwards, and we can have a look at it when it comes out. So now it's in the kiln. We need to put a freshly kiln washed shelf, kiln washed side down, into the kiln, and then it will go on at our pressed firing schedule at the end of the video. So here it is out of the kiln and it's nicely um, sandblasted. We, we sandblast the, um, uh, the top off. You will end up with sort of some bits of stuff on here and you will need to sandblast it or work it with a diamond pad and maybe soak it. Right now, because it's dull from the sandblasting, you can't really see the color, but if I just wet it off, you can see how amazing it will be once it's all um, fire polished up. And if I hang it up like this, and then you can see how beautiful it will look hanging in a window. So my idea now is to put some more 3D um, pieces on here. And also when it goes in the kiln, uh, I will put some two bits of metal so it can hang up in the window, which is why it's nice to have this rough edge along the bottom because hanging up, that doesn't matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some pieces on and then we can see how it looks afterwards. So the idea here is to add these um, uh, foxgloves to the scene because I love foxgloves and how they grow in woodlands. Um, so to do this, taking a stringer and just putting it on, we're using quite a long stringer, foxgloves are kind of beautiful, thin and tall. And then I'm taking our um, foxglove mix size marini and starting with some larger ones at the bottom. If you look at the bottom of foxgloves, they're not always, so they can be a bit straggly at the bottom, so you don't have to sort of worry too much. But I'm just going to lay a bit of glue either side to put them on so I can try and get these on quite quickly to show you. I'm trying to put them all the same way up so that there's a slight tilt to these and that they're tilting upwards. Um, and I basically put the bottom layer down first. Going from slightly smaller sizes as I go up. And then after that on top, I'll put more, kind of overlaying them. In fact, I'm going to move that one up. And then it's probably kind of every other one putting these down. with a pair of tweezers but I'm just going to try it with my fingers. So when you're near the top then I'm using frit to do these areas at the top. So I've just got some olive green opal frit and um, trying to do, we're going to have to ignore the phone ringing because I'm going to just going to just um, carry on. Sorry about the phone ringing. Um, put some 
bits of green thread. See, this one I feel is a bit too large, so I'm not going to use that one. Um, but these are a better size, so it's sort of looking through your frit and choosing which ones work well. And then once I've added a few bits of green frit to it, I always like to make sure this is one at the top that's a nice shape. That's a perfect shape for the one at the top. Um, and then just taking, this is the um, pink opal, which is the same as the darker colour opal in the, a bit too big, um, in the foxglove marini. I'm putting a few of these down, like so. Just to be the tops. Um, and then finally, I'm just putting a few I'm not sure. green marini. And Alexa's having a go in the background too. Everyone's having a go in the background. Tonky's phone, Alexa's chatting. So a few green leaves. Um, and that's that. I think that's all I'm going to do to this piece. I think it's quite busy anyway. Um, and I just think these three um, fox gloves are going to really make it kind of pop and add something extra to it. Um, it will now go in the kiln and attack fuse. It's going to have a long anneal. We've got quite a lot of layers of glass going on here um, and need to take that into consideration. So it will go in the kiln now and we can have a look at it when it comes out. It's in the kiln ready to go and I've just literally put some metal hooks under each side um, so I have something to hang it on when it's fired. So here it is out of the kiln all nicely tack fused. I love this piece. Um, I kind of love the details in the background. Uh, it's not massively pressed, but it's just got softening around the edges and how it sort of pushed all the glass together. Uh, I'm really pleased with, and I love our fox gloves. This is just our new, newest Marini fox gloves. Um, and they're so pretty and vibrant and how you kind of can put them together to produce this beautiful flower piece. It's gorgeous. Um, it's so pretty hung up against the light, against the window um, with the light coming through the transparent glass. I really kind of like the idea of um, and sort of just putting it up with a bit of a, a string like that so it can hang will be the perfect way to show it off. Um, I hope you've liked this YouTube video. If you have, please subscribe.